Hallo und willkommen zum dritten Teil meines Let's Plays von The Excavation of Hobbs Barrow, einem Horror Point and Click Adventure von Cloak and Dagger Games, herausgegeben von Wadget Eye Games. Das Video stammt aus einer Streaming Session auf Twitch, daher nehme ich meist mehrere Folgen am Stück auf und schneide Pausen heraus. Außerdem füge ich Kapitelmarker hinzu, diese findet ihr unten in der Beschreibung und in der Abspielleiste. Wir spielen das Spiel auf Englisch mit Untertiteln. Ich freue mich auf eure Fragen und Hinweise in den Kommentaren und wünsche gruselige Unterhaltung. Dann, willkommen zurück in einer zweiten, dritten, ich glaube dritte Folge. Ähm Excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Wir sind wieder in Bewley, beziehungsweise einem Wald in der Nähe von Bewley und äh, wir haben den VK ähm, gerettet, indem wir ihm Blutarm ablaufen lassen. Warum auch immer. Und äh, deswegen ist er uns jetzt äh, versprochen, dass er uns zu Mr. Schulner bringt, der uns eigentlich schon gestern hier ähm, treffen wollte in unserem Inn, aber nicht da war und bisher auch noch nicht aufzufinden war. Und deswegen... Nachdem wir jetzt hier die Stadt Bewley, oder das Dorf ist es ja eher, das Dorf Bewley, erkundet haben, werden wir wohl ähm, ja, versuchen, äh, jetzt endlich mal den Grund unserer Anwesenheit zu erfahren. I'm ready to go to Mr. Shoulders house. Excellent. I feel the fresh air will do me well. Follow me. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Mrs. De Plancy. Mrs. De Plancy, this is Thomasina Bateman, a visitor to our parish. We've already had the pleasure of meeting, Father. Excellent. Miss Bateman, don't hesitate to try one of Mrs. De Plancy's wonderful cakes. Yes, I've heard about her famous Bakewell puddings. I'll be here all day, young lady. But remember, once they're gone, they're gone. Those little whelps have already gobbled up all the gingerbread. You are doing God's work, Mrs. Deplancy. He smiles upon us, Father. Miss Bateman, if you'd like to follow me. Let's talk of graves, of worms, and epitaphs. Make dust our paper. And with rainy eyes, ride sorrow on the bosom of the earth. Let's choose executors and talk of wills. Shakespeare? Quite. Which play? Uh... Hmm. Oh, ja, alle mal das versammelte Bildungsbürgertum. Ich habe keinen einzigen... Nee, das stimmt nicht ganz. Ich glaube, ich habe schon mal ein bisschen Shakespeare gelesen. Aber nur in Auszügen und nur, ich glaube, mit Sommernachtraum oder so. Ich wüsste es nicht. Das ist ja offensichtlich so ein Ding im englischsprachigen Raum, dass man wissen muss, ähm, was in Shakespeare-Stücken gesagt wird. So ähnlich wie man bei uns wahrscheinlich Teile des Faust auswendig können sollte. In einer gewissen Schicht. Aber ich habe keine Ahnung. Könnte Hamlet sein. In Macbeth wird aber auch gestorben, glaube ich. Hm. Warten wir mal. Macbeth, würde ich sagen. Wenn hier niemand einen besseren Vorschlag hat, ich weiß es nicht. <lacht> Macbeth. Magnificent guess, Miss Bateman. But I'm afraid that passage is from Richard II. Hm. Studying the work of the Bard is one of my favorite pastimes. Follow me. Behold, the vast expanse of God's creation. The moors extend as far as the mortal eye can see. 
beautiful, is it not? Ist halt auch sehr flach. Hm? Schönen guten Abend, Herr Gemeiser. Ja, eben, genau. Der Onge, Olle Angelsachsen Goethe. Ist es äh, ist offensichtlich so selbstverständlich, wie bei uns in Goethe gelesen zu haben. Wobei ich ja behaupten würde, naja gut, man hat auch nicht alles von Goethe gelesen. Aber es gibt ja ein paar Sachen, die sind offensichtlich so selbstverständlich, dass man das wissen müsste. Hm, indeed the moors are beautiful, I find them rather desolate. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Hm. Indeed, the moors are beautiful. The beauty of God's creation is that it takes so many forms. How can one take in such a view and not have faith? Some look at these moors and think this a godless land. But I tell you, he is found in all domains. The Lord's work is all about us. Oh. Tell me, Miss Bateman, do you believe in God? <lacht> Ach, das ist ja gut. Man kriegt nur die Antwort, äh, die Antwortmöglichkeiten Lügen und Wahrheit sein. Und wir wissen aber gar nicht, was die Wahrheit ist. Von daher habe ich ja gar kein Problem. Sage ich einfach die Wahrheit. I was brought up Anglican. The church was an important part of my early life, Father Roach. But what happened to my father eventually made me question things. If you don't mind me asking, my child, what happened to your father? He had an accident when I was very young. Oh. Come along now, Thomasina. Let's get out of the rain. Oh, stimmt. Das haben wir am Anfang gesehen schon. Remember what I told you, all right? Be a good girl. People are unwell here. They don't want to hear you running about making noise. Understood? Yes, mother. Good. And don't annoy the nurses. I promise I won't. Good. Now, let's see your father. Daddy, wake up! Hmm. Mummy? Mummy? Good evening, Mr. Bateman. Hello, little one. You must be Thomasina? Y yes My name is Nurse Blaketon. I just need to talk to your mummy for a little bit. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Bateman. Mrs. Bateman? Will he ever talk again, Nurse Blaketon? The doctor is uncertain, Mrs. Bateman. There is the possibility that Mr. Bateman won't regain any movement at all. But we will do our utmost to look after Mr. Bateman here at Ticehurst, ma'am. He will have a nurse by his side at all times, I can assure you. What sort of god would allow this fate to befall such a kind and honest man? I'm sorry to hear this. God moves in mysterious ways, but he loves us all. Hmm. Come along now. Hello. She scampered off in a hurry? Who was that? Some primitive folk make their home out on the moors. I suggest you keep your wits about you when you are exploring, and don't stray too far from Bewley. I see. How much farther to Mr. Shoulder's house? Still quite a walk, I'm afraid. But we'll get to him soon enough. Now then, take a look at this. Legend has it that this cairn has stood here for over a thousand years. How remarkable. The Devil's Toe. 
I beg your pardon? That's what it's called. The Devil's Toe. Oh, I see. Come now. Onward. We walked and walked across that vast, featureless landscape. All the while, Father Roach was whistling away merrily. Just as I had begun to wonder if we were hopelessly lost, a building emerged from the mist. Mr. Shoulder's cottage. Here we are, Miss Bateman. Unless my memory fails me completely, this is Mr. Leonard Shoulder's house. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. Now, now. No need to thank me after your providential assistance today. However, I have something to ask you. Yes? Please don't tell Mrs. De Plancy about my little scene in the woods. She will only fret. The poor dear woman has enough on her mind as it is. I shan't mention it. Thank you. You'd better see if Mr. Shoulder is in. Mr. Shoulder? Is Thomasina Bateman here? I'm here in Bewley as discussed. Maybe try again. His hearing probably isn't the best at his age. Mr. Shoulder, are you home? Mr. Shoulder is not at home. Curses. Perhaps you could try the handle. It's locked. I've no desire to lug a block of wood about the countryside. Slightly damp. I have a similar one myself. So very warm. A pair of thick woolen trousers. No sign of life? None. The window is nice and clean. The dwelling is by no means abandoned. Nun könnte es natürlich sein, dass er einfach irgendwo spazieren ist. Ich meine, wir sind ja auch unterwegs. A carved stone has been affixed to the door. I think it depicts a crescent moon. Father, what do you make of this? A peculiar adornment. I've not seen any like this in Bewley. Though it does remind me of a passage by the Bard himself. <clears throat> it is the very error of the moon. She comes nearer Earth than she was wont, and makes men mad. Hm. Müssen wir was reaten? Ich weiß es doch nicht. Und Mond vor. Könnte bei allen drei sein. The Merchant of Venice? A splendid comedy. But that particular passage is from the great Othello. I'm afraid your knowledge of the bard is somewhat lacking. It's been a while since I've read his work, father. Never mind. I've come a long way to meet you, Mr. Shoulder. Please open the door. A carved stone has been affixed to the door. I think it depicts a crescent moon. It's bolted onto the door itself. I can't remove it. The window is much too high up to reach. What else do you know about Mr. Shoulder? A reclusive man. I must say I know very little about him. Does he attend services at St. Edmund's? Not regularly, if at all these days. Perhaps he feels closer to God out here on the moors. What do you make of Mr. Shoulder's residence? A sturdy construction, I'm in no doubt. The winds blow a gale out here, not to mention the pelting rain. At least he must have plenty of eggs to eat. 
Awful creatures, those hens. Do you know that young girl we saw? No, but I've seen her sneaking around the churchyard. The poor thing is feral. She takes off at the slightest stirring. We will bring the Lord to her. A good time. Perhaps she has her own beliefs. You said there were others like her. Primitive folk, yes. Avoid the moors in hours of darkness and don't wander too far. I wouldn't entrust a young woman in their company. Hmm. Do you know anything else about the Devil's Toe? Not really. I do recall it toppling over when I was a child. A few lads from Bewley rebuilt it to the best of their memories. The Devil mustn't have been happy. Come now, my child. Do not joke about such matters. Why don't you like hens, father? I know I must love all of God's creatures, but they make such an unholy ruckus, and their talons claw at my boots. But they mean no harm, and they provide eggs. I cannot abide hen's eggs. They smell of sulfur when rotten. What more can you tell me of these primitive folk? Godless people, Miss Bateman. Don't concern yourself with them. They live out there on the very edges of this land. If you don't wander too far, you shouldn't cross their path. You mentioned that Mrs. De Plancy is worried about something at the moment. It is not my place to say. Mrs. De Plancy will tell you in good time, if she deems it fit to do so. What is your favorite of Shakespeare's works? A very difficult question, Miss Bateman. But one I can answer, nonetheless. I am awfully fond of Cymbeline. An unusual choice. All gold and silver rather turn to dirt. Wouldn't you agree? A fine quote. Is there a Mrs. Shoulder? No. I believe Mr. Shoulder has led a life of celibacy. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. Tja, haben wir jetzt natürlich nicht so richtig viel. Und wir sind hier. Es don't encourage them. Hmm, we have also the card here not to find for you. That is natürlich irritierend. Frage is. I found this necklace inside the church. Do you know who it belongs to? Many in our congregation wear such things. I'll announce it at the next service. Do you mind if I keep hold of it until then? Not at all. That's a peculiar idea. Ja, das dachte ich mir auch, aber warum nicht, habe ich gedacht. This key doesn't fit here. Ich habe halt keinen anderen, was soll ich machen? Okay, also wir kommen nicht rein. Nehmen wir den weg? Ja. <lacht> Gehen wir wohl wieder. I've only just got here. Okay. He looks much too unruly to be picked up. A sweet little hen, plump and well groomed. I'm rather fond of this colour. Perhaps Mr. Shoulder and I share similar taste. I can't think of anything else to talk about right now. Okay, also wir können nicht mehr mit ihm sprechen. Wir können nicht weggehen. Das irritiert mich hier. That glove looks familiar. Ah, I wonder if it matches the glove I found behind the plow and furrow. The gloves are a pair. Does this mean Mr. Shoulder was in the alley last night? Why didn't he come inside to see me? Perhaps he's gone for a stroll. Possibly. I'd suggest you call back later, my child. I myself must make my way back home. I have some matters to attend to with the church. Shall I accompany you back to Bewley? Hmm. Ja. Ich meine, wir können hier nicht wirklich was machen, habe ich den Eindruck. Ich meine, wir können auch die Tür nicht öffnen. Gibt es irgendeinen Nachteil, wenn wir jetzt mit ihm zurückgehen? Ich würde denken, das nicht. Let's go. As I say, my child, Mr. Shoulder will make himself known. Do not lose faith. I'm rather frustrated by this situation. Now, now. Things move at a slower pace out here. Something you may not be so accustomed to. I... Come now, Miss Bateman. 
Well, Mr. Shoulder, you've brought me to Bewley, and now you're nowhere to be found. As we trudged silently back to Bewley across those cold moors, I made a new resolution. I would find Hobbs Barrow myself, with or without Mr. Shoulder. The train! That must be Kenneth. Kenneth? My assistant. I see. Well, Ms. Bateman, I really must attend to some other matters. I hope Mr. Shoulder finds his way to you. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. My pleasure. Parting is such sweet sorrow. <laughs> Much ado about nothing? Oh dear. I thought that was an easy one. Romeo and Juliet. Of course. That I shall say good night till it be morrow. Lord be with you. Aber schön, dass es ein Achievement dafür gibt, dass man die alle nicht I weiß. Meet Kenneth at the station. <lacht> er sympathisch. Margaret's lookout. I wonder who Margaret is or was. Nun gut, dann holen wir mal unseren Assistenten von Zug ab. Können wir jetzt die Karte verwenden? Jetzt können wir die Karte verwenden. Ja, dann machen wir das doch. Where is Kenneth? He was supposed to wait for me at the station. Well, that's one mystery solved. It's Arthur Tillett. What's he doing in there? Mr. Tillett, where did you go last night? Have we met? Last night at the Plough and Furrow. Oh, Miss Bateman. I was blind drunk last night and woke up with a stinking headache. You still smell like a brewery. Sorry. You went to use the lavatory and never came back, Mr. Tillett. I searched everywhere for you. I think I remember you bought me a drink. Then it's all a blur. I woke up in my bed this morning with my wife sour at me for waking her at some ungodly hour. About last night, what were you going to tell me about Leonard Shoulder? Who? Leonard Shoulder. You told me you knew him. And promised to tell me more if I bought you a drink. Which I did. So what were you going to tell me? I, uh... Oh, I don't really know the old bugger. But you said you did. Oh, I... No, no, I, I know note about him. No, note about Leonard Shoulder. You're hiding something, Mr. Tillett. I don't believe you. I say a lot of things when I've got the drink in me. I probably just wanted you to buy me an ale. A likely story. Look, what would I gain from lying to you? I just wanted another drink. Even if that's the case, it doesn't explain your disappearance. I, I don't remember out. Hmm. I'm looking for my assistant, Kenneth. Oh, I. His train has arrived. Not a single soul disembarked the last train, Miss Bateman. Impossible. <laughs> was that not the midday train from London by way of Derby? Aye, it were. Mr. Price were here, unloaded a few crates. But no Kenneth. Not a soul. Hold on. One of them crates had your name on it, Miss Bateman. A great big one, it were, with... A red ribbon. Aye. What is Kenneth playing at sending my equipment but not himself? Curses. Where is my crate now? Mr. Price took away all the crates on his cart. Who? Mr. Price. He's the postmaster. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom, just north of the plough and furrow. You'll see it. There's a royal mail plaque on the wall. Thank you. 
I found Mr. Shoulder's house, but he wasn't home. Don't worry, you'll find him. Warum wissen alle, dass ich ihn finden werde, aber keiner weiß, wo er ist? How's your headache faring? It feels like a steam engine is driving full pelt in a circle around my skull. Be sure to drink plenty of water, Mr. Tillett. Aye, aye. I'll survive. About last night. You really don't remember where you went last night? As I say, it's all a blur. I remember needing a piss. Then... nothing. But you must have missed me when I came out. I did not. I even went to the gents' toilets to find you. Oh, I A sight for sore eyes. It was. I checked everywhere, and you were nowhere to be found. The back door leading to the alleyway was blocked from the outside. Oh, I. Yes. You must have exited through that door, Mr. But you just said it were blocked. There must be an expl... My mind has drawn a blank. Why was the door blocked? Did you block it? I told you I don't remember. I've no to say because I remember not. Hmm. So you work here? Aye. Bewley Station Master at your service. Would you like to buy a ticket? Not just yet, thank you. I understand that some of the locals are not too happy about this new station. Aye. I'd go as far as saying the whole village. How long has the station been open for? About three months. We're on the Midland Railway Line. This employment's been a saviour for me. If I weren't stood here, I'd be drinking my life away at the pub right now. It's worth the occasional withering look from Cyril and the rest of them. What does a station master do? A bit of this and a bit of that. I don't wish to bore you with such things. As you wish. My responsibilities here keep me on the straight and narrow, I'll tell you that much. A sense of duty can do wonders for a lost soul. Indeed. This must be a rather lonesome post to occupy. Trains pass through here more regularly than you might think, lass. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom, just north of the plough and furrow. You'll see it. There's a Royal Mail plaque on the wall. Thank you. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. Hobbs Barrow. It's why Leonard Shoulder invited me to Bewley. He thought I might like to excavate it. Oh, aye. I heard about a Hobbs Barrow somewhere out there. There's some old stories around it. What stories? I can't remember. Mr. Tillett, please. This is important. I'm awfully sorry, Miss Bateman. I'll try to remember. If he invited you here, then I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you all about it. That's if I ever get to meet him. I'm sure you will. Farewell for now. <laughs> Tara. Das ist ja wieder alles sehr mysteriös. Good day to you, Cyril. I'll do, lass. What are you up to, Cyril? Keeping an eye on that bleeding railway station. That's what. Thankfully, no one got off the last train. Really hate that station, don't you? Oh, I curse Midland Railway for bringing their damn line through Bewley. This is our town, our land. It is no place for outsiders. So you keep saying. Anyway, no more trains today. Almost time to celebrate with an ale, I think. I could do with one myself. You pay in? Uh, no. I found Mr. Shoulder's house today, but he wasn't home. Why the bleeding hell should I care, lass? I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Do you know where it is? Mind your own business, lass. You really are quite helpful, aren't you? Bah. Goodbye. Ta-ra, lass. Er hilfreich. That must be the postmaster's storeroom. Hello. Good day. I haven't seen you in Bewley before. 
I'm just visiting. Lovely. It's nice to see a new face. We don't get many visitors. My name's Henry. Henry Long. Nice to meet you, Henry. Thomasina Bateman. Wonderful. What a treat! I'm looking for Mr. Price, the postmaster. Oh, Mr. Price, my lovely neighbor. I'm afraid you've just missed him. Curses. I saw him wheeling a large crate into his storeroom just there. It must be mine. I really need it. Have a look through the window to see if it's yours. Where did Mr. Price go? I don't know. The man were in a hurry. I know he has family in Bakewell. That's miles away. Did he leave by foot? No, by horse. He must be a few miles down the road by now. Curses. When will Mr. Price be back? He didn't say. Could be tonight. Could be a few days. How infuriating. I told him I'd keep watch of his storeroom. And I'm a man of my word, Miss Bateman. I shall not budge from this spot. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? Aye. Funny old fellow. I hear he lives way out on the moor somewhere. Have you seen him recently? No. Not for a long while now that you mention it. Why do you ask? It's a long story, but I was to meet him in Bewley. He invited me here. Well, I must thank him when I see him for inviting such an enchanting young woman. You flatter me, Mr. Long. You seem in a good mood, Mr. Long. It's just lovely to see a new face. Where are you from, Miss Bateman? Mm. Originally, a small town on the outskirts of Derby, Mr. Long. Though I currently reside in London. London? I've never met anyone from London. How very exciting. Have you lived there a long time? It's been quite a few years now, yes. I've heard that the air there is so heavy with smoke, it makes it hard to breathe. Is that true? Some days. Oh, you must miss the fresh northern air. Well, you've got that in Bewley. No factories out here. Such things are a blight on his creation. I were born in this very home I stand in front of. Bewley is in my blood. Why would I ever want to leave? Especially now I can meet new folk thanks to the railway line. <laughs> I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. One of those old burial hills? Yes. Do you know where it is? Believe it or not, I haven't set foot on the moor since I were a child. Why is that? I've got all I need right here in Bewley. And we're all truly blessed with the railway station which brings us lovely new faces. Your opinion of the railway station differs widely from your fellow townsfolk, Mr. Long. I've not met anyone particularly keen on it. That railway line is the start of a new era for Bewley. Mark my words, there's much to protect here, but we need new blood. I hope that some of you visitors will actually stay here permanently. Why is that? So I have new friends to talk to. <laughs> some people here don't want any new friends. Cyril Farnaby, the miserable old sod, is the worst offender. <laughs> I've had the pleasure of meeting Cyril. He really dislikes the railway station. Absolutely miserable he is. I've tried to convince him many times that the station will help Bewley. He just doesn't understand. I met him last night in the plough and furrow. Aye, the scene of our many debates. Blimey. I could go for an ale right now, actually. Can I buy you a drink? Really? No. Wait, do you think Mr. Kemp will let me open a tap? Perhaps. You could always ask him. Hmm. I shouldn't leave anywhere. Mr. Price is relying on me to keep watch of his storeroom. Goodbye. Don't be a stranger. There's my crate. Kenneth always ties a red ribbon to it. I can see an envelope tucked behind the ribbon. Perhaps it can help explain Kenneth's absence. I'm going to have to get in there. Royal Mail, Postmaster's Residence. This must be the local post office. The Postmaster isn't home. But my crate is in there. You'll have to wait for Mr. Price to get back. 
Hm. Ach, ist das alles kompliziert. Passiert aber auch nichts so, wie es geplant ist, scheinbar. Also wie im echten Leben. Ja, was machen wir nun? It's Mr. Stanley Kemp, the proprietor of the Plow and Furrow. He had mal schon gesprochen. I'm sorry to ask this, Mr. Kemp, but could I please open a tab? Still not in your purse? I'm afraid not. My assistant hasn't arrived as planned, so I find myself in a bind. He must have put the money in my crate, which is currently being held in Mr. Price's storeroom. Well, as you know, I run an honest establishment here. And I do trust you. So yes, I'll open an account for you. To be settled at the end of your stay. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. Now then, I'll be needing something of value as a deposit. I thought you said you trusted me. Aye. It's not personal, lass. One can never be too cautious. I found Mr. Shoulders home. Thanks to the help of Father Roach. Wonderful. So you've met our vicar then? Yes, I did. An interesting character. Indeed. So, did old Leonard apologize for his absence? Not quite. He wasn't home. What is that man playing at? You tell me. My assistant has not arrived as planned. Oh, is everything all right? I'm not entirely sure. Am I to keep a room for him just in case? If you could hold it for one more night, Mr. Kemp. As you wish. How can I open a tab again? Leave me an... I'll give it back to you at the end of your stay, when it will be time to pay the piper. Goodbye. See you soon. Ich muss nicht mal sagen, was von Wert geben. Wir haben natürlich diese Kette. Will you accept this silver cross pendant as a deposit? Can I take a closer look at it? Silver. That'll do. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. Can I get you something to drink? Not right now, Mr. Kemp. As you were. So. Haben wir einen Account? Heißt, ich hoffe doch, wenn wir ihn jetzt da zum Getränk einladen, dass er denn da weggeht. Und dann können wir da rein, und dann können wir unser Kistchen angucken und ich hoffe doch, dass wir zu. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you a drink, Henry? Really? Really. We can talk more at the inn. But I told Mr. Price I'd keep watch of his storeroom. Doors have locks for this very reason. You're right. One drink won't take long. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. The rocket weren't Stevenson's only design, you know. Before that, there were the Blucher and the Locomotion. But my favourite would have to be the Lancashire Witch. I believe he built that in 1828. In Newcastle, of course. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait! Ta-ra, Miss Bateman. I couldn't even get a word in. He likes a good chinwag, our Henry. He certainly does. Hm. Das hat ja auch nicht so funktioniert, wie ich mir das gedacht habe. Hm. Ja, da ist wieder ein freundlicher Hinweis, dass eigentlich eine Folge rum ist. Dann würde ich auch an der Stelle denken, dass wir vielleicht mal abspeichern und ein kleines Päuschen machen. Denn offensichtlich kommen wir ja hier nicht so richtig voran.
Ich hatte gehofft, dass ähm, wir doch ein bisschen klarer wenigstens ähm, werden, was hier unser Ziel oder unsere Aufgabe ist. Aber so richtig haben wir immer noch keine Ahnung. Das ist eigenartig. Aber dann werden wir wohl in der nächsten Runde versuchen müssen, uns da ein bisschen klarer zu werden. Insofern erstmal Ende dieser Runde. Äh, und dieser Folge besser gesagt. Und ähm, wir sehen uns dann beim nächsten Mal. Herzlichen Dank fürs Zuschauen. Lasst gern eure Meinung zum Video in den Kommentaren da oder klickt die entsprechenden Buttons. Meine ganzen Let's Plays gibt's auch als Playlisten auf YouTube oder Peertube, wo ihr mir gerne folgen könnt. Die Links gibt's unten in der Beschreibung. Bis denn dann!